Big Sal's sweeps came out, and Adar maneuvered the huge ship as close as he could and began plying her guns upon the densely packed Grick rear. Mahan was still helpless, but Larry Dowden carefully conned Walker, on one engine, right up the river, until she virtually ran aground on the silty bottom. There the destroyer unleashed a barrage of high-explosive shells into the raging horde on shore. It was a massacre. Ellis positioned all three thirty cals on the far left flank, where the barricade met the sea, and together with the two fifty cals on Walker, they poured a solid stream of lead into the enemy flank. The panicking Grick fought back with renewed ferocity, but they were caught between the heavy reinforcements pouring through the barricade and the wall at the base of the city, where miraculously a small group of holdouts from the shattered right flank still held. Added to this was the catastrophic fire from the ships and the machine guns. The increasingly terrified Grick army began to melt away like an ice cube on Walker's midday deck. Once again, just as in the battle for Big Sal when Walker had first truly met the Lemurians, the Grick broke. It was as though whatever cause, motivation, or collective madness made them capable of fighting with such heedless ferocity and abandon suddenly gave way to a crystal-clear understanding of the danger they faced. At the same instant, whatever it was that drove them, be it blind instinct, courage, or a combination of the two, spontaneously evaporated. Within moments, what remained of the entire Grick horde had transformed from a juggernaut of destruction into a panic-stricken mob of mindless animals consumed by an instinctual, unthinking impetus to escape. Once again they trampled or slaughtered one another in their effort to flee, and whatever ability they had for cooperative effort dissolved into blind self-preservation. And once again, through their own surprise and relief, the weary and battle-worn Arialans, Bimbadans, Marines, and Shattered Guard regiments, home clan guards and destroyer men as well, all sensed the opportunity and pressed their advantage home. It was believed that as many as a thousand Grick might have escaped the butchery that followed. And Sandra Tucker heard it all. The crash of Walker's guns and the deep-throated roars of Big Sal's, the staccato yammering of the fifty cows on the water and the sharp but almost puny by comparison report of the thirty cows on the left. The triumphant roar when the grick broke and then the screams and the shooting and the muffled throbbing thud of blades striking flesh. And then, after what seemed like hours, a strange, awkward, almost silence. 